You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. I grew up like I didn't grow up in Brazil, but I grew up in a place where it was like there are consequences. Like I'm not saying like oh you got in trouble and then you got killed. Like, <laughs> but situational awareness is something that I'm still like. I used to walk my dog in California, and I would like low key have his choker collar around my knuckles, and like if anyone's ready to pop off, they're just gonna get a barb to the eye. Like I was always kind of that way, but dude, that was like you grew up in a place where a wrong turn meant like you could die. No, 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 not in São Paulo. São okay. Paulo, I grew up like in a really good neighborhood. Like I was went to a really good like sports club. Yeah. So for me, it was, I would say the life was a little bit easy, uh, and I made it happen. But uh, but you but, were still worried about like even when you're driving down there, you're worried about like getting you making sure you don't get boxed in, in traffic absolutely. and things like that. Like, so oh, like whenever it's like a nine nine o'clock at night, I never stops in, in any red light. I never like there. There are a couple of procedures that you, a couple of protocols that you do. It. Like whenever you're gonna get in your house, you you gotta like look around just to see if not people are on on the streets. You know, you, you gotta do that. But so, like his house, let like, put in perspective though. His house has everyone's house in his neighborhood has walls. He's one of the only houses who doesn't have a security guard in front. He has electrical wires and a big you know yeah. guard and always had you know a pit bull Rottweiler. Yeah, and so like. Like, was, like d during my childhood, I, I didn't even have like uh, keys for my house. Like the door was always open, always open. You, you can go anytime, just open the door and get in. When did you realize at what age that like, this is not how people live in the rest of the world? Uh, I think well, once you start traveling and you come like, you came to like US when I was like, really young, we went to Disneyland and I was like, fuck, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. And my parents are, always liked here. And, and it, once you go around, it's have, that's that's pretty nice to leave. You you don't have to have your guard up. You know, like that's a place that you want to have. Like, eventually, I want to have kids. You know, so you don't want to have your kids like running around in the streets and maybe something wrong can 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 happen. I mean, it can happen here as well, but there is like a lower lower risk for sure. How much of growing up in that situation do you think shaped like kind of who you are as an athlete? Uh, a lot, of, absolutely, because you always have to be like on on a high alert. And because, like, you live like in a good neighborhood, as as Jeff just mentioned, so you gotta always be like on on high alert, like whatever. You know that you, you you're a target. People want to want to get your shit. I never got robbed, but but there was a situation that my brother got robbed in front of me, and was like the most. Uh, Racha? No, Silvio. I was gonna say, who's fucking? Crazy? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fuck Silvio. Not, dude. Silvio bought like a brand new like motorcycle, like super cool, and like a month after, we closed the gym, and it was like uh, December twenty third, and I parked in front of my, my own, in front of his apartment and said, let's go out to eat. It was like ten thirty at nine. Three guys stopped behind him, came down with, like with guns, said, oh, you're a police officer, we're gonna kill you, you're gonna kill you. And I was watching everything because I parked my truck like 20 meters away in front of him and I was watching everything on my mirror. So I was like, I'm gonna step out of the vehicle. I grabbed my phone and I was like, what the fuck I'm gonna do it here? Everybody has guns. And in Brazil, uh, let's put that in perspective. I think it's one of the countries that has one of, uh, how can I say Jeff, that Jeff, that has, the Which, highest gun control in the world, like uh, it's one of, it's, yeah. uh, it's crazy. Like for you, a good citizen, for you to buy a gun, you're gonna spend like around fifteen thousand dollars, and it's gonna take two to three years to get the license because you gotta go to the federal police. So the whole process of owning a gun, it's. I think it's one of the highest murders exactly, per capita. Exactly. And then that's the tough one of the toughest exactly, places to get exactly. a gun legally. Yeah. So it's it it makes no sense because. For the past 15 years, the government, they tried like to get the guns out of, out of uh, the streets and they have failed like really bad because they only got like from the good citizens. All the criminals, they're not gonna, they're not gonna turn the guns to the government. So, or they'll just use machetes. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Sorry, is that a joke? No, I that remember uh, the, yeah. one of the days, I'm trying to that think happens. where, yeah. I think one of the trips when we went to Rio for like the Arnold and we turned on the TV in the hotel yeah. room, there was a hostage situation going off, like yeah. not too far from where yeah. we were at. And they held like a, a woman's head.
head like was out the door and the guy had a machete to her oh neck. God. Yeah. They had already killed like a few people, I think, in yeah. the thing, but it was a standoff. But yeah, like, they just had a like big you, machete. You gotta understand, like you have the, the highest gun control, one one of the highest, maybe I'm wrong on that, one of the highest gun control in the world, you have sixty five thousand people that get murdered every year by gun. Do you guys run off a different calendar year that doesn't have three hundred and sixty five days in <laughs> no. it? How the what's the math on that? It's well, a lot. Twenty it's people crazy. a day? They also have an insane it's crazy. population too, and specifically yeah. in Rio. <clears throat> It's right. crazy, crazy, crazy. How many million people live in Rio? Like 12, 15. In Sao Paulo, it's like 30. Half the size of 30. Sao Paulo's, Sao Paulo's bigger. So you have yeah. you have Canada in a city. Yeah. And you see how many thousand of murders a year? 65,000. Like, Google right now. Like, I don't have, like, my phone is dead. But you can Google, like, last year. How That's, I'm trying to do the reverse engineering the math on 365 days, three and a half being half of seven. That's a that's a lot of murders. That's like Southside Chicago yeah. looks like, dude. Bal Harbor. Toronto went like ten years without one, and then everyone freaked out when we had one. And yeah, look, sorry, maybe I, I'm wrong. Fifty-seven thousand. <laughs> oh, sixty-five thousand. Fifty-seven thousand. Okay. You forgot it was, to carry. Uh, Two thousand eighteen, and then it goes on. Two thousand seventeen, sixty-five. You know. That's insane. Yeah. So there's more now. If that trend continues, uh, it's, it's, that the, the data is only showing until 2018. Do you imagine how many people murdered during COVID? They had to stop the because of coronavirus. There? No, <laughs> more people 100% got killed during coronavirus. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You, everyone's pent up. In Everybody. This, dude, yeah. If I don't have air conditioning and yeah. I'm in, so am I near the equator? <laughs> people are getting, I'll kill 67,000 people. <laughs> One thing that's interesting that like he hasn't brought up yet, which is like kind of you know, got my attention when I was there was how many bulletproof cars there are. So like, you know, and also like he has a, some friends that have them and it's always, it's a low profile car that you would not think like, you know, it's not like a big suburban, like the typical cars here that they're doing bulletproofing on. Right. It's like, what, what, I forget what my girls does. Like a, it was like a Hyundai something yeah. with bulletproof and like, just like things you wouldn't think and you know, the glass is obviously like super thick and yeah. they like really don't want to call any attention that they have money and then to be safe i'm yeah. like because it's like because he's like oh they, you're like hey don't worry we're going to be good his car's bulletproof i'm like well, where are we going like, yeah you yeah. never know but uh, and then you go through the sports club at at pinero's Everything like you can see in front of when you look at the window and see you can't really you can tell yeah. the bulletproof ones i'm like many bulletproof cars are here a you, lot. Go, you go fucking a lot buddy a lot. <laughs> and i was like i kind of that's when you know you're in a little different yeah. world it's like i don't Think outside of like politicians. I don't really so, know so, who has. So let me get here. just just real quick. Let me get back to the story. My Sorry. brother got robbed in front of the house by oh, gun. Yeah. So they would. My brother is like like blonde like you, a little bit taller. How tall are you? Like yeah, five eleven, six foot. Five eleven. No, I'm, I'm much taller yeah. than you, brother. Yeah, you're, a, you're, a big, <laughs> you're stronger <laughs> than me. You're more successful. So than <laughs> my brother Silvio is like six two, six two. Jeff six three. I don't know. He's pretty tall. Yeah, six two, six three. Yeah, and. The guy was like, oh, you're police, you're police, like, we're gonna kill you, you're gonna kill you. And it was like a really bad situation. I was watching everything, I couldn't, couldn't do anything. They robbed the, the bike and I started following the guys. I called like right away my, 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 my friend from, uh, is this, uh, special forces from uh, the civil police in Sao Paulo. I said, hey, uh, his name is El Chumelo. He, he trains by the SWAT team. He, he does CrossFit as well. He's one of the CrossFit champion. He does, loves snatching, clean, jerking. Uh, great dude, black belt also, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, and I called him, I said, hey, Silvio just got robbed. I'm following the guys. I gave the instructions, we're going uh, southbound, whatever, like the neighborhood that we're going. And then like, I start going to a really rough neighborhood I, and he told me, man, let it go. Don't worry, we're gonna get this bike. And that's the difference like in Sao Paulo and Rio. Sao Paulo, the police runs the city. He said, don't worry, we're gonna get the bike back. I said, I'm not really sure about that because it's pretty dangerous. <laughs> so like after two hours, I said, let's go get the bike. And then he came with the police car. We went there, got the bike with Horacio. Horacio got in the bike and just sped up like out of the, the really rough neighborhood. But before leaving, Horacio told me, man, look around, bro. Like, it's not good, you know, like the, the, it's gonna be really hard. Like the, the slums that we were, I could not even like see this, the, 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 the the sky, because we were searching like in a hole. There were like little houses like covering the skyline and I could not like see like anything. And my brother said, man, this place has, it's, it's 
there's no way you can you can turn this in a good good place. There's no bigger warning sign than when Horatio says you're in a bad spot. Because I feel like your brother has probably been into the worst spots yeah, ever. Like absolutely. the Chechnya story. Absolutely. I was just like, there's absolutely. no one who finds himself in worse trouble than absolutely. your brother. Absolutely, absolutely. Every time I talk to your brother, the initial the conversation with Horatio is, like, bro, that's like literally, everyone's like, oh my God, that's crazy. So when did you move over from Brazil to here? So in 2017, like I spent four years here in St. Louis with Jeff. I went to university 2010 to 2014. I graduated in 2014, got back to Brazil. We had a gym down there, like a CrossFit gym, a Jiu-Jitsu Academy, and an Olympic weightlifting. Uh, I stayed there until 2016, the end of 2016, that when, when this uh, robbery went down, and I said, you know what, let's, let's sell everything, let's, let's just leave. So we moved at the beginning of 2017, I had a, a business opportunity with a friend of mine, Eduardo Ferrino. He had a gym, he said, Fernando, come over here, let's work together. So I started working, and after a year I got in touch with Hayden, and Hayden said, come here, and let's work together. So that's, that's pretty much a couple so years So you would have story. competed at the Olympics and then moved to the States after? Yeah, 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 that's what I did. And cause, so right now you've got, because you competed at Rio. I, I competed, the, my first Olympics was London 2012, Okay. then Rio 2016, and now we're prepping for Tokyo. Now, to you, like the Rio one's got to be special. Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. It was the first time that I had like the, the, a big crowd like supporting me because I always, I always competed uh, in Europe, Asia, so I never had like, and, and you gotta understand, Brazil is not is not popular in strength sports. So uh, uh, people always you should make fun when, when they see like Brazil in the the hosture, they they would say, oh, pff, yeah. he's not he's not good. It's not Brazilistan. Exactly. Like, exactly. This guy gonna do? He's being exactly. modest though about. So it was the <laughs> only, the only session in the Olympics that was sold out. You were there. Yeah. Oh, unreal. and then the introductions, the whole crowd during the introductions. Everyone was like hitting their feet on the bleachers, yelling Fernando, Fernando. Yeah, we had a whole like cool. section with shirts and everything, and the, the announcer had to say, "Hey, everyone, be quiet!" And like let him like they had to like stop the introductions because everyone was going so crazy. Yeah. And then and then That's they so cool. then they started the introductions. Then right when they finished um, announcing the last guy, everyone started chanting again. And like the whole place is shaking. It's funny because I down. feel like the the Olympic weightlifting etiquette code never made it to South America because <laughs> no. it's just like I mean I I got really introduced to Olympic weightlifting through Jordan and watching him compete. And you go there and it's almost like this. Uh, yes, like next up, it's like a golf essentially with a barbell. It's like up next we have Gilmore Happy and Lafferty Daniel. And it's just like and then all like I watch you guys train at hybrid and it's just like. I, I swear one time, I didn't know who was doing it, but there was like a Vuvuzela in there somewhere. It was just like this giant horn. I was like, I don't remember this in the Olympic weightlifting manual. <laughs> it's like, this must be Latin America Olympic weightlifting or something. Cause it's just, it's, it was so different. Like yeah. Olympic weightlifting to me is like a bunch of people who have cats. Yeah. And like, just, it's just, it's so, dude. cause he goes and like, like we were at the AO. Uh, what would that have been like two years ago in Vegas? Vegas. And it's just like this giant auditorium with a bunch of people lifting and like they come from a powerlifting background. So it's like a shitty backyard Metallica cover band turned into weightlifting competition. Mm -hmm. And it's just like up next. And, you know, up there's always next. a shot of like the coach yeah. on the side and they get the lift. And this is <gasps> you go on the clean and jerk. And there's a collective holding of the breath. And it's just like you get a golf clap and everyone's <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? And then I go to hybrid. And it's just, it's just, that's, it's just Spanish and Portuguese just getting pretty yelled much. across the gym. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, uh, like our, our daily training is like brutal. So you have to have like a good environment. If you, otherwise you're going to sleep. If you have this environment that you're just saying, and you're already like in pain, everybody's like, has like kind of like a bad mood. You, you gotta be like really proactive. Let's go like yelling. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Otherwise, it's impossible to, to, to go through the training session. Now, who was that for you when you started? Because you're that for everyone in hybrid. Yeah. Like, yeah, who hey, was that, that week when you weren't here? Was that? Th that week when you weren't here? Bullshit training over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. They took that week off. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, like oh, yeah, we're, we, we have training at 10. I'd come in at 10, ghost time. <laughs> it's like, they, they, they took advantage. But it's crazy to see just the gravity that you have. Like you said, you're that for everybody there. It's like when you're there, it's like, Nobody wants to disappoint Fernando. Everyone like wants to live up to you know like the standard that he's setting. It's pretty yeah, cool. that's pretty cool. But I who is who that. is that for you? Like what right like, now? Oh no, like on your way up. 
Like, there's got to be times. Like, he like, lives in a tent like, in his driveway in California. <laughs> and, like, there's no hype. His dog barks sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I always had my family supporting in any shape or form. My dad, my mom, uh, everybody, like, my brothers. They were always there, like, never let me down, whatever. Like, I, I would, like, doubt myself or I had, like, any, 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 uh, any fall, like, oh, I'm not feeling good. Like, somebody would be there, like, behind me, pushing, no, you can do it. You have to do it. Let's fucking do it. So uh, we, we tried to narrow down the, the, the doubts and, and the, the, the questions that I had. And I had all the support that I needed, like, from my family, from my sports club, uh, from my team. And pretty much it is. It, it, even though there is, like, individual sport, you must have, like, a good team environment. Otherwise, you cannot do anything. So you have to share your passion with all other people. Otherwise, it's really hard like to train by yourself. I, I've trained by myself. Like whenever Jeff was in the university, I always had the advantage to train with somebody that was higher level than me. So for example, one of the reasons why I moved to US is because back then, Jeff used to do 160 and 200. And I used to do 140 and 170. So I said, like, oh, well, I'm going to go and train with this guy. So I trained with him, and then after him, like I was to the same level, 160, 200, 190. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go train with, who, who's better? Oh, Christian Scalanti back then was a super heavy. He should do 180 to 20, he was the best. And I told Jeff, I was like, I placed last in Pan Ams 2007. We competed against each other in Rio, and I placed last, it was last place. Like, he was the youngest person in the whole meet. Yeah, but, but, you were but, 16? but it's, not, it's, not, it's not nice to be last, right. it's not bad. So I told him, I was like, brother, uh, I'm going to win the fucking Pan Ams, uh, the next Pan Ams, four years. So I did a training camp, went to fucking, who's the best? Who's the best? Let me see who's the best. I was that guy, I'm going to go and train with this, this guy. So I'll fucking do the same thing. Is that, that when he, he went to Ecuador for like yeah. six months yeah. in the mountains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. That's like when I went to the fucking stay like training three times a day, seven in the morning, 11 and five in the afternoon. Uh, pretty much copying whoever was the best guy. And I shot like my my level start to to went, like go up, go up, go up. And four years after, I, I won Pan Am Games and and broke all the the records. So when you did the eighty five twenty five exactly eleven yeah exactly six for six. So I moved from last place to first in how many years? Four years, four years. Yeah. When did you qualify? Like what was the mo like what was the event that qualified you for the Rio Games? There was the the the, the two previous World Championships. And also the, the Olympic trials uh, that I I had to do like good numbers, so I did like I think 190 and 230, and everything was going like perfectly. Like my, my, my whole prep was good, but one thing that I've noticed that I started changing because I start to get older. So the same protocol that I was doing like four years after, uh, four years before, five years before wasn't working anymore. I was training seven in the morning, eleven in the morning, and five in the afternoon. So I start doing like a, 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 a like a, not over training, but my training start going down and going down, and I, I couldn't sleep well. I couldn't recover. So all the injuries start to show up. Like I, I, I tore fifty percent of my elbow, and I tore hundred percent of my, my chest. I tore fifty percent of my knee. So I had to sit down with the with the, the group of coaches there and say, listen, it's not working. You know, it's not it's not that I'm I don't want to do the training, but this training is not fucking working. So we gotta change, otherwise I won't be able to compete at the Olympics. I won't be able to show up the day that I have to show up. So I'll go here, like, we sat down before, six, seven months before the Olympics and said, whatever it takes to get a medal, we're gonna do it, okay? Everybody here, it's not gonna be good, it's not gonna be pretty. Uh, you can eventually get hurt, as I did a couple of times. I had to do like PRP like four times in six months, which wasn't pleasant. But uh, eventually I had to, to change the protocol because it wasn't working for me, you know? So like, what was like the biggest lift? Like, was there a lift where, quali I would imagine that up into the point of actually competing in Rio, the, the biggest lift for you would be like, okay, if I lift this, I actually get to go compete at the games in my home country. What it's was, the, was there a single lift where like, I need to snatch this? Or I need to clean jerk this to go to the game. I think you guys did it on Sinclair, though, who made yeah. the Olympic team. So, like, there wasn't anyone close to him. Yeah. So, it was basically, like, if he was healthy and could go to any competition, yeah. like, he was going to make it. So, okay. I don't think it was a... They don't have... It's not, like, a formal trials, right. per yeah. se, like, U.S. Yeah. So, I think... 
I don't think there'd be that one. Sorry. No. So then no, no, what, no, would, be the, kind of what would be the biggest lift then? You're right. I, I, I think for me, the biggest lift was 200 snatch. That's, that's definitely something that <laughs> only like very few people in the world have done. Like how many lifters have done 200 snatch in the world, Jeff, in the history of the world? Like 15? Probably roughly. But then in Pan America, I mean, you were no the one. first person in history? ever in the history of the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so the, 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 the first one... So where was that? So you got 200 kilos on the bar, what's the event? Did you do 200 first, or was that when you did 202? Two, no, 200 I did in 2017 World Championships in Anaheim. That was the that first time that... we I, watched last night. Yeah, that was the mm -hmm. first time that it's not, uh, it's not 200. No, that, that was, was 2015 that we were watching, in Houston. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So I did 195 and 230 there, and in Anaheim I did 200. It was the first time that it's not 200 in competition. Uh, and I've never snatched before 200 in training. I, I've done from the blocks, and and that's a, another like different way that how we train. I always try to pick at the competition because I'm not able to pick during training because I'm not able to recover. You know, like the, you have other lifters from different countries. They 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 lift much more weight during like training. So and for us, we have a, like, a little bit different protocol. We cannot play by the same rules, whenever I say that is by, by using the same fucking drugs that they're using. Mm -hmm. So we have to pick always during the competition, not 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 before, otherwise I, I'm not able to compete. So it's always tough for me, like, and I don't know if you guys experience this, but like there's milestones when they present as numbers, like 700 for me, like a 698 squat, I've done that out of however many times I can't count, but there's only a handful of times where I've squatted over 700. So it's always crazy when a PR just exists at like a, a rolling over to a new digit. So you're at, you're in Anaheim. You're at, what's the competition? Uh, world Championships. You're at World Championships. I'm assuming this is your last attempt. Uh, that was my my second attempt on snatch. Okay. I opened with 192, jumped to 200 because uh, I had a guy from Iranian that he was, he was banned for 12 years for doping and then he, they, they took it off the ban for eight years and they said, no, you know what? No, you can compete. So they put him to compete, you know, last minute. And I was like, fuck, I wasn't expecting this fat motherfucker to be here. <laughs> so, so I had to like, like boost my numbers because I was fighting against him. Like, so uh, I did, I snatched 200 and then he snatched 202. So I had to go to 203 to get the medal. And I, I, I missed the last attempt. So what was like your thought process going up to the bar, going from a 190, what was you saying 192.5? 192 to 200. Yeah. Was like, fuck, I remember, I remember hearing my brother Silvio uh, at the crowd saying, fuck, you can't fucking do that. Just do it. Just fucking do it. So I was like, it, it, and it's funny because my best competitions, it's like I don't have anything on my brain. I, actually, I don't have much going on in my brain. You know me? <laughs> but, but, my, <laughs> but my best... <laughs> <laughs> there goes my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> but my best competition is just like, man, like if you open my brain, I, I have like a piece of paper. And, the, and, and this competition, I was in this stage, like on really just, just going through the motion, like not considering how much weight was in the bar. And it was the first time that I tried like 200 from the floor and, and I was able to do it. It was the first time that I've touched it from the floor. I've never done it before. So like, was, was a really, really, really nice movement. Now on the flip side, is there ever moments where you're like, you, that's not a piece of paper in your head? Yeah, yeah, whenever, whenever like I have, uh, my body's aching, I have a little bit of like pain and, and I have some doubts. So then I start to hear like the, the, the good voice and the bad. No, you are able to do it. And the other one say, man, it's really heavy. You're gonna hurt yourself, take it easy. So it's like a mental battle, like saying, no, 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 like I can do it. Let's, let's shut it down and, and try to repeat that. The good motion, good motion over and over again. So I, I'm able to, to, to make the lift. So what, and I'm kind of interested in all your opinion on this. It's like, because I'm sure we all have it, right? Like we've all competed at pretty high levels in barbell sports. Like what shuts it down for you? Do you get, because you, you're so annoying to watch lift. Because you it's just not like the biggest grind it's ever. It's the worst thing. It's the fuck. Because it's like everyone else has doubt that you're gonna get this barbell up, <laughs> but you seem the only one supremely confident enough that this RPE Hayden fucking deadlift is gonna go up. Like, what? What is? How do you resolve the conversation in your brain, or is there a conversation in your brain? I think once I've like made the choice that like I'm putting that attempt on the bar, it like in my head it's made. Okay. Like I put it there because I've already told myself I I can do it. So. 
literally the only way that I miss lifts now is gravity forces the bar down. Right. But like it's it will never be a case of like oh, I don't think I have it, so I'm just gonna bail on it. Like if I miss, then gravity just literally pulls. You it don't down. get the yips or anything like that. No. No. So you don't. You're not one that fails off the floor on a deadlift or anything like that. Like you're 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 it's moving. Yeah, I mean, if, if it gets past my knee, I'll always make it, for yeah. sure. Uh, it's just, like, I think due to my proportions, right around the knee is where I struggle if I do. So, so it's like, it's, once it's on paper, it's this, the, you've committed, there's no there's no yeah, doubt. I might be wrong. But sure. Like, in my head, I'm convinced. But there's I'm no yips or anything like that. W- yeah. What is harder to compete? At? I've never competed on powerlifting. What is harder to compete? Olympic lifting or powerlifting? They have their own, cha- uh, like, challenges. I think if I had to just, like, straight up say one or the other, weightlifting, because... Unlike uh, power, like powerlifting, if you've done your prep properly, you know you, you go into it knowing like you're not. If you miss your opener, you you made a dumbass move, right? But it's not uncommon for someone to miss an opener snatch. Like you can do uh, perfect design. prep, you can be perfectly ready, perfectly rested, ate all the right food, and just like something happens and you miss a snatch or you bomb out in snatch, you know, and it's like fuck, you just wasn't there that day. Like your something was off in your head or whatever. I think powerlifting is just. Uh, the variables are more controllable and also like you don't play the same games in powerlifting really that you do in weightlifting and if you do play those games like changing attempts to try to fuck people up and stuff it only happens in deadlift whereas in uh, weightlifting dude people in like the C session are dicking around with attempts trying to mess mess people up you know yeah. in snatch and in clean and jerk. Yeah. so yeah. there's just a lot of moving parts in weightlifting and I think it's a little more like in the moment mental uh, sharpness matters a lot. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I would say for me, like, I keep it like in my mind. It was always like I keep it really tactical, where I always try to think like, hey, there's two things, like, one or two things. What do I need to do to make this lift? Because like I never would get very like emotional or anything like that, where I don't respond well to like even if it's like people give me encouragement, like it, it doesn't really help me. Like it's got to be because like those emotions don't help get the bar overhead to my chest so like i would always think hey if if i'm going to make this lift here is tactically what i need to do specifically like hey if i need to you know keep my you know hips in this position or time it this way and foot movement so i I think like once i was locked in based on those you know how my warm-up felt and how my training went i would kind of know what those tactics would be you know to make the lift so it, it, there was times where like, hey, all my warmups are feeling different or my training wasn't good leading up to the meet. So it was just kind of, con- those are the meets where I didn't you know, obviously perform poorly. But if I can identify, hey, in the more room or for my training in advance where, hey, here's what, what tactics I need to do to make it. I think those are the things for me. If okay, that, if that I, think, I think that's a really good point that he just made it, that you cannot let your emotions control your lift. And I remember like very vividly, when it was in uh, 2018, the World Championships in Ashgabat, uh, I went to do my, my second cleaning jerk, 245 kilos, so five kilos that more than you saw at the gym. And I remember that one of the coaches said, go get your medal, okay? You, you're gonna write history right now. So I made the clean and it was the easiest clean of my life. And once I stood up, I remember right now, like on my head, I said, fuck, I got the medal, I got the medal. And I was still fucking performing the lift. So I made the, 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 the dip a little bit shallow and I wasn't able to push with my legs. Barbara was just a little bit like in front and I lost the lift and it was like, it was done. And I let the emotions fucking on my head and I lost the fucking world medal. Oh man, what about you? For me, it's all about relying on preparation, right? The, the preparation leads to confidence in, in your technique that you've accumulated over that time. So. If I feel well prepared, I feel confident walking on the platform. And then with that, it also comes down to uh, th- what it takes to get into competition. I think, did I come here for nothing or did I come here to lift this weight and do what I came to do? So when the preparation fails, it's fucking willpower. <laughs> it's, I'm here to lift weights, I'm gonna fucking lift this weight however I have to. So Was that the worst mess? Was that? Was that the worst mess? 2018, Oshkwan? Was that the worst mess? Yes, okay. because that was the medal. That was the first medal, like, uh, whoever got like a super heavy medal in history, Jeff, Paul Anderson from the United States. I mean, you have to go back pretty far. Yeah, in the 80s, 70s. Yeah. 
So back like uh, in, in modern history, no no one had fucking done that. So it would be would be pretty 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 big, yeah. and and that was something that definitely the the, the 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 Europeans they don't appreciate that when we go there and, and take their medals because they they pretty much have everything like numbered. Uh, so it would be would be a big disappointment for them. And for me, for me, it was the biggest miss for sure. Now, are you someone who's motivated by their wins or motivated by their losses? Fuck, uh, that's 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 fucking a great question, Doc. That's a great question. The, I, I don't know how to turn it off. Like, I, 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 even in Rio, that was like a really nice competition. The next day was the gym, uh, the gym training. I fucking, I had my, my, my plane booked for to to go back from Rio to Sao Paulo which is like really like 50 minute drive a uh, 50 minutes uh, airplane I drove it back I was like fuck I'm not waiting for my plane I fucking got in the car he left that you left that night yeah I was like fuck I was pretty disappointed because he I didn't skipped get the, the the team Brazil party yeah I said fuck <laughs> I, I, I'm not getting to get in any party I don't deserve this shit so let's drive it back and the other day was like doing like some something at the gym. So you so you competed at the Olympics in yeah. your home country yeah. for your home country. Yeah. You what did you place that year? Uh, fifth. You placed fifth in the world. Yeah. And at the, you drove back. To I South drove Florida. back five hours because I said fuck. I don't deserve this fucking party. When was the last time you celebrated? Fuck, I don't know. Like, uh, like I took a, I, like my vacation was when I when I got the knee surgery. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the worst vacation. Yeah. Come to Club Med, we're gonna cut yeah. open your knee. That's the shittiest yeah. vacation ever. Yeah, like it was the longest break that I got like in twenty years of of, of training. Uh, but even though uh, like I got surgery at five p.m. and the other day at, at eight thirty, I had my first PT session, where we were just trying to to move and do something. I I, I like to. And, and Jeff put it up like when when I was uh, younger. I don't know if you remember that. He told me once like, "Fuck, take an, an injury as as an opportunity to work your, your your weakness." Because every day that you go to the gym, you work what are you good like big muscles, legs, back, biceps, triceps, and you never work like the edges. So whenever you have like a fucking injury that you cannot perform the the, the regular lifts. Fucking take that as an opportunity to work the, the, the small details. So I said, fuck, I'm gonna do that. So I started like doing like bodybuilding, your upper body, like bench press, uh, everything that I could like do upper body and while I was doing rehab for the knee. That's insane. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. So how is the Tokyo setback thing? Like how have you been dealing with that? That was good for you. For no? me it was very good. For me, it was very good, very good. So, it, well, in what ways, right? Because I feel like everyone is equal to opportunity. Like, why? Because he's coming back from a surgery. Okay, so yeah. you got a little bit was, of extra time. Yeah, yeah, like in six, I got surgery in six months. I was doing Pan Am Games because I needed that to qualify for the Olympic Games. Otherwise, we'll not be having this conversation right now. So in six, I had a six months window to rehab my knee and compete at Pan Am Games to win Pan Am Games and then qualify for the Olympics. So I, I had that qualified and I was like everything is fine let's prep and they they said fuck no not Olympics anymore and for me it was a blast because I had more time and for me being here a hybrid fuck everybody shut down like the whole not not in Europe not not all the tough guys they're still training but everybody back even in Brazil they, they closed my sports club and being here Hayden fuck we're not gonna close the gym you go down and you train as you as, as you may please so for me it was it was amazing I would say it gained in my opinion 10 to 15 that extra year will 10 to 15 kilos absolutely for you i think it at, at least in the list which is going to probably ultimately be the difference maker of podium or not so when i saw it got pushed back i knew yeah. like and i'm familiar with i had somewhat similar surgery so i know the time frame yeah so i was like i was like oh this is i'm like this is great yeah and then it's some of those guys i mean there obviously there's some younger supers but then the older too so like but yeah coming back like he said come back from the injury i think that was, was like yeah this will work. that was the first thing we said when we saw it. we're like oh this is good for him yeah so is it it's locked in now yeah it's locked in for uh, almost 100 percent because i mean it's not almost 100 it's a thousand percent because uh, I think I think one of one of the reasons is because Florida said if you guys cancel, we can do it here in the Florida. Could you imagine? That'd be amazing. Just to hold the host the Olympics at hybrid. Yeah, That'd that be fucking dope. <laughs> I was like, hey, let's go to the Olympics. Drive I ninety five up north Over and then, Orlando or yeah, some good. shit. Yeah. Yeah. So after know. this this uh, pressure that they put in Tokyo, then then Tokyo said no, we, we got to do it. So how many months? 
we have four months. I, I, I'm going to compete in uh, August 5th. I love how you word that intuitively. We have four months. <laughs> like, yeah, I did that. Look how we we got four months to get raised to the games. No, it's, it's a journey that we fuck. We're doing together. Like uh, every day that I'm in the gym, talking to you, talking to Hayden, talking to you, Stephanie. I'm I'm learning and observing whatever the f like, not the fuck that I can, but whatever like whatever I can, you know, to be, to be like a better fucking athlete. Uh, so we have four months. But I think That's it's good. not so much about just being around. Like, I mean, you're around some weightlifters, but you're around. It, people doing extraordinary things, yeah. whether it be in not, not just lifting weights, but in business and things like that. So I think it's like a motivating, from the conversation, I don't know, it's like a motivating environment absolutely. to be in. Absolutely, um, absolutely. You know. I, I, and I've been learning so much. Absolutely. Where, like, that's an interesting point. Where do you think you draw the most amount of motivation from? Or does it change? For, uh, that's a good, very really good question, man. You got, you're getting deep here, brother. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shallow dude. I don't yeah, have no, you're not. No, dude. I that, don't have that's this. the one thing I've I learned about people who are like world class at <laughs> literally anything. It's not by accident. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, fuck. I, if if you really try to find motivation on everything, you're not gonna fucking do it. You're not gonna have it. You gotta be really consistent. And and Hayden fucking told me once like that, w w like you limited your options. So you have no options. That's so. Eventually, you, you have one direction. That's that's where you're gonna go. So you gotta be consistent every day, and that's what I try to do. Like if you really try to get motivated by other things, by by external whatever whatever may be, I think that's not the right. Do right you find action. that works in the opposite direction too, where like with that in mind, where you don't look for external motivation, it's actually harder for externalities to throw you off course. Absolutely, absolutely. Because because uh, you you have no time for bullshit. You have no time for whatever like drama. You have no time for anything. So fuck, I'm not interested in that. Like it, that's not not gonna help me in any shape or form. I have my fucking path that is already designed. So I, I gotta go like that direction. And you're trying to fucking swerve me to the left or to the right. No, fucking that. So we're going right there. Like you know. So what's a normal day look like for you? Fuck. Uh, today was a, a little bit abnormal. You hope we don't do this every day. Uh, but a normal day, I wake up like at 8 a.m. Uh, I have my breakfast, and then my wife wakes up. That, then she starts working. Uh, I have like whatever my protein shake. Go to to hybrid. I start warming up around like 10, uh, and start training 10 to 12:30. People start to arrive. We we start lifting weights. I finish my training. I go immediately. Uh, I eat something right away, and I have PT for 40 minutes, one hour, and then I go home, eat, take a nap for two hours, two hours and a half. Come back later, at hybrid. Uh, start warming up again. Train from 5:30 to 7:30. Go home, do sauna, uh, do a little bit of recovery, and then eat, eat again, and sleep. That's it. What? Like with the lifters that you have around you, like I, I'm slowly starting to piece this together. Like he was kind of the first, I didn't know what was good in Olympic lifting yeah. or anything like that, but I'm to understand that everyone that lifts at hybrid now is insane, right? Well, like the, you have that a, whole weightlifting team is stacked, right? Yeah. You have pretty good. No, it's, it's tough because you measure everybody against Fernando, right? He's a guy yeah. who comes, has come top five at the Olympics. So it's like, we have a warped view of what's good, yeah. but you throw Medina in any other gym, he's by far like, the best, the best. Guy. or uh, even Benson is Benson. A really good. Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, I was gonna say Hunter is like Hunter, a Hunter weightlifting is team too, right? Level weightlifter, yeah. uh, Moni is Moni. amazing. Aline as well. Aline didn't Aline like place at yeah she, she was uh, yeah, she was a, a, cha a world champion like under fifteen or under seventeen something like that yeah. But you kind of like you kind of alluded to it, though everyone measures the measuring stick is is Fernando yeah now as that. I mean, two things. Does that come with a certain level of pressure, or is, it, or if, is that pressure any higher than the pressure you already put on yourself? And with that, too, like being the elder statesman, what piece of advice do you find you give most often to the lifters that you work with? Fuck! Don't don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. Well, Olympic weightlifting is a long process. is It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So it takes a long time for you to develop uh, strength. It, it takes a really long time for you to, to learn the movements, the technique, and there is a window uh, we, we should like play. It's, it's tough to teach uh, new tricks to old dogs. There's no way. If, if, you, if you miss the, 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 the window of learning, so whenever like you're developing your nervous system and, and you haven't developed uh, for Olympic lifting or any other sport, 
you're not going to be good at Olympic lifting. Forget about it. And usually this age is, this age is between 10 to, to 14 years. Uh, when you're like a teenager, if you don't develop this, this window, you're not going to be as, as good or as, as effective. Of course, there is different type of, of guys that or girls that they are really good. But if you haven't developed yourself during this age, you're not going to be top level. So you were this dedicated at that age? I was, I was. I, I, like my, my, my dad was a power lifter and he put me in the sport. And I remember one day when I was like 12 years old, that, that's a good story, 12, 13. My mom was always super chill, always super cool. My dad was always like a, kind of like a hard guy. And one day I was tired, I came to school. I said, oh, mom, I'm, not, I'm gonna skip training. I'm not gonna train today. And my mom said, sure, just, just sleep, just r relax. And my dad was working. He called the sports club, said, hey, where's, where's the kid? <laughs> and they said, oh, he's not here. So he called my mom. He called home. Hey, where's the kid? My mom was like, oh, he just left. He, he's, he's training. My, my dad, you're lying. So my dad left his work, crossed the city. Like some part of the traffic is horrible. He beat the shit out of me like bad. <laughs> <laughs> put me in the car, drove me to the club, and we had like a group of 10 to 15 like teenagers, and he embarrassed me in front of everybody. He said, listen, while you guys were hard working here, training, this spoiled motherfucker was like sleeping. You're how old? I was 12, That's to, amazing. Yeah, 12 13 years old. And I remember that I cried and I felt like so bad. And after this, I never missed a fucking practice. Never, never. <laughs> There's no question for you. You said or you said earlier that you like one day want to have kids. Yeah. You're at work. Yeah. You just get this sense that little Fernando's <laughs> fucking sleep. The little a little twelve year old Fernando. Do you do the same thing? I, I, I think so. I think so. I think uh whenever you're that 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 young, you 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 don't have the freedom of choosing. You like it's your your parents' obligation to choose for you because you don't have the, the, the wisdom, you don't have the, the, the experience of choosing for yourself. Uh, maybe he was a little bit tough on me, but, uh, but, but I think he learned through the process with my other brothers. My other brothers made a lot of mistakes yeah. and, and did a lot of yeah. wrong things. Maybe if we beat uh, Horatio more. <laughs> he beat it up so much, Horatio, man, so much. But, but, but definitely, like, like back then, I, I could not see through this perspective, but right now, like I understand, like really well. Like you, 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 you cannot let let like a 12, 13 years old decide what they want. They don't want anything. Like you, as, as a father, as a parent, you should guide and have the the, the best decision, you know, for for your kid. That's That's crazy so. because I don't have a single memory from the age of twelve. I was telling him the other I day, the many. first memory I actually had, like the first form memory of the human being is actually my mom making me eat antibacterial soap in our house in St. Catherine. That's when my memories came online. Because you said a swear word? Yep. I was and four. My mom did that to me once and then she was concerned that she made a mistake so she tried it herself and it was such a bad experience for her that she cried and apologized. Yeah, see, you know, I got a, I got a wolf mother. Wolf, my mother was like, no, I don't, I don't need to know this to know you deserved it. <laughs> That's crazy. Twelve years old. Yeah. Now, how often do you call on that? Like, do you, do you think about that often, or like, or do you do you use that as a teaching point often? I yeah, I do use that as a lot. I I tell a lot of this story like when I'm when I'm teaching seminars. And that was really funny because once, like, I went to my one of my big sponsors is Petrobras, is like an oil company from Brazil, and I was telling this story for like a like a group of VPs and executive guys, and everybody was laughing, but the the the, the psychologist was saying, oh, no, no, that will bring a lot of trauma. You cannot do that. And I was like, fuck, it's already done. Sorry, like. You know, and then the <laughs> boss of the company, the president, said, "You, you guys understand now. I, I'm Fernando's dad here. So if you guys, <laughs> I'm gonna buy shares in this company. That company's gonna be really successful in, in 18 years. That was That's funny, crazy. Bro. It was really funny. Now, but with the like, I see you interact with the lifters here. There's never, like, it's nothing but support. Yeah. Like in everything, it's yeah. just it's so crazy to me that yeah. it was." the iron fist that was part of your development, but with you, like you dispense with that. Like everything is constructive, everything is uplifting, everything is supportive. That's even. a great, great, great point, great point. Like I, I'm not as tough uh, as, as, not as my dad was, but 
I, I think I think it's important for them to enjoy the process. I, I, I did enjoy the process, but for me it was like really professional since the, the beginning. And and people nowadays they have like so much like other problems. I, I didn't have those problems to be honest, you know. Fernando, you you just told us that you grew up in a neighborhood. It's like ah, oh, you could get in trouble, aka die. <laughs> it's like hey, life, yeah. life was simple. Avoid those parts. Go to training so your dad doesn't whoop exactly. your ass. Eat, sleep. Exactly. That's he, it. He's the most optimistic That's person it, bro. though. Like you'll That's it. you'll ever meet. He always looks at the bright side of any situation. And like I'll use a prime example of like so. My dad was in the hospital with a bacteria infection in his spine, and he was myelitis, or something. I forget what it exactly was. Um, but basically, he had a bacteria infection that, from his um, arthritis medication, left him susceptible to infection. We'll get into all that, but it started eating away at his vertebrae. He's in pain. Ended up being in the hospital for a month. He lost about you know, you know, almost twenty kilos. Yeah. And um, Fernando goes, hey, I'm like, I'll come visit your dad. I, hey, man, he's not like in too good a shape. So he goes, like, so Fernando comes in, hey, what's up, Dr. Whitmer? Like, what's going on? And then he goes, hey, like, hey, this is good. Like, you don't have to go to work. You can just chill, like, no stress. And I go, I go, I go, hey, buddy, I go, like, he's in a lot of pain. And like, they don't know what's wrong yet. And um, they like, we're still in, but he was like, just, hey, just chill. He can watch TV. It's all good. And he like looked at the, like, the, try to look at the positives. And I was, then I remember we were, because we were walking out of the hospital parking lot. And then, it was like, yeah, I was like, I don't know. I was like, we're still, we're still trying to, they're still trying to figure out what's wrong, but it's not really a good situation. He goes, oh, fuck, sorry, buddy. <laughs> but uh, he was just like, hey, it's good for your dad to like rest. He's been, he works two jobs and stuff is good. But he always will like, no matter what it is, try to look at the bright side. And he's like, hey, he's going to make a full recovery. And like, it, like everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be good. But he's like always thinking of that regardless. So I think that just like carries over to sport too. That's but true. That That's was true. just like the, we, I, I still tell that story. My dad talks yeah. all that. Uh, it's funny. You know, it's, I think Fernando so could do really well on Cameo. Just having a rough day. Just like cost me 20 Dude, for a little boat. The what? Are you on that? Cameo? Cameo? What is that? The, it's the an app I told, I told Amanda to get on no, it. I'm not. And I said, you got registered on it because she said, oh, everyone says to Fernando, wish me happy birthday like for this and this <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah. So I go, I go get him on Cameo, all the people in Brazil to go to the seminars and all okay. that. So I, I don't think she set it up properly. I don't know. So, uh, Steph is on it. I would, I I would use so Fernando's will... Cameo if I was just having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, I'd be just sitting like... in the office with him out there and I'd request one. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like a little pick me up. Yeah, Steffi's on it, and so yeah. people will just like um, you set at whatever price you want. So like, yeah. and you can get anybody. Like, you if you want Floyd Mayweather, I think he charges like a thousand bucks for one. So they'll just be like, hey, it's like my girlfriend's birthday. Can you just say happy birthday? And then that person act, will record and say basically whatever it is you want them to say, and then you just get paid for it. The Bruce like, Buffer ones are pretty good. The UFC oh and the Yeah, He's yeah. Very <laughs> That's cool. Someone hired Bruce Buffer through Cameo to break up with their girlfriend. No, so really? it's like, love it's that. It's time for <laughs> oh, Haley <shit>. to move. <laughs> oh. There's no way that's real. <laughs> yeah, it's real. And Dude, like, where do you draw the line though? Like, yeah. if you're Bruce Buffer, like you message the guy back, like, yo, handle your own shit. <laughs> like, do your own fucking laundry, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, he probably priced at the point of indifference. He's like 500 bucks. I'll all right. I'll tell you. Oh hey, man, that's a, that's, low, that's a low. That's a low price, man. That's amazing. Five hundred bucks. Every, see, Fernando would be the opposite. Fernando would be like making everyone's day better. Yeah, he priced it like a dollar. Just have a thousand day. Just, that's all he does now. It's like, sorry guys, can't miss. Can't, I gotta miss training because I gotta send everyone these uplifting <laughs> messages. It's a crazy service. Though. Fuck. It's like only fans. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't take it there. <laughs> I'm sure there's a market for it. Okay, okay. I'm okay. sure you get a weird. You have a weird DM request. Fuck, I do have, man. Yeah, not good. Not good. No, not good. no. There's, there's like I, I'm married. You know. Yeah, but dude, I I'm, girls. I'm not married, and I'm still not selling my underwear on the yeah, internet. I, so I, that's I that's you. a hard no for me. But I would like to get like naked girls. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's been the, my aim in my life for the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> just, most of my once I have food in me, it's like, all right, what else do I need? Yeah. I just don't say it in such a Brazilian way. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, pretty much. Um, but so right now you're four months out from the Olympics. Yeah. You're heading up things in hybrid weightlifting. Yep. What else you got on the go? Uh, I have like seminars lined up after the Olympics. I have. Uh, that's pretty much what I do. I have uh, a training all day. I work for a hybrid, 
Uh, I have seminars. You send notes on Cameo starting <laughs> after this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just setting up where, the account. Where are the seminars? In Brazil, mostly I have like in Brazil. Last year, no, not last year, two years ago I had in Spain and then I traveled with my parents, but uh, pretty much like I have a lot in Brazil. I have, I have a big uh, following from Brazil, so. So could we twist your arm to do one not in Brazil? Because like I don't want to get in trouble and die. No, like okay. you, you guys gonna have a blast. I, I'm taking Hayden and Steffi if you wanna come. You, I'm you busy guys gonna that have a, day. <laughs> you don't guys worry, gonna don't have worry, a blast. ways. We yeah. we got the proper ways right here. Yeah. We'll make sure we no, don't or like I, I'm I'm trying to make a trip and Jeff Jeff has been there many times. Like I wanna go to São Paulo. We spend a few days yeah. with them so they can go out to eat. Probably put them in the uh, hotel unique. It, they're gonna have like a blast there and then get the bikes and go to my girl's house in uh, Tabachinga and maybe fucking set it up the boat to be there. It's the one so, where we rode the Way Runner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So fucking. But, Sounds but, like a good time, Jordan. I think you should come. Yeah, but now everyone knows the itinerary. Now we're sitting ducks. He has a friend just that has like. Order. <laughs> his friend has, I don't know how many houses or whatever, beach, like beach houses and places all over. So it's always like when you go, it's kind of. It's always unpredictable. You don't know exactly where you're going or which one. They just kind of decide. And now, when you say that, just, I'm assuming someone puts a pillowcase over my head when I get there, uh, and they just I just they take it off, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're here now. That scares yeah. the shit out of me. But, uh, but I mean, Floripa's the. I mean, Floripa's can't really beat nice. then. Floripa, Andre's like, place in Floripa, you can't beat that. Yeah, Floripa, I, I would highly recommend going down there because like, like you, you'll have a great time. Like Floripa is they, like where they for you, go. you're gonna love uh, it. Yeah. Like you have all the, all the girls from there from like that lives in Floripa, they are usually uh, uh, German descent, so the, all the girls are pretty like blonde, tall, like oh, his favorite. amazing. Hey now, <laughs> careful! Amazing, <laughs> like 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 another breed. You know, they are they are good horses. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That's the gauntlet. Yeah, Episode yeah, yeah. over. Before yeah. we get to their good. How many times have you been there? Like to Floripa? Yeah. Careful. We just went that one time. Oh, you went the, one, one time for the okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the no the the best place there is the the Jure International yeah, Beach. It's, I mean, there's like nice. there's like twenty different beaches yeah. you can pick from. But the the New Year like they have the big New Year celebrations. And we were in the his friend's high rise is right where they did the fireworks show, and it was like. An hour beautiful. and a half long, he started crying. Huck, it's so um, beautiful, bro. It, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's like, like beautiful. if he like plan it out when he does a seminar, like get a crew, go down there. Yeah, I'll fucking I'll go. Let's um, go. Go down there and then yeah, Let's I mean, go. a lot of thoroughbreds down. Just there. just a quick uh, quick story. Like whenever Jeff was down there, uh, one day I went I went to the garage because I was leaving, and my friend my friend is his name is Ma, uh, his nickname is Magrão, which means big skinny. And they call him Gordão. Yeah, and they call yeah. me Gordão, which okay. is big fat. So I call him big skinny. <laughs> They're best me, friends. Yeah, like we grew up like I know this kid like for 25 years. So I went to the garage. I was like, bro, Magrão, what happened to the car, bro? Like the car was total. Like the fucking windows were broken, the front was fucking, someone hit the front of the car, the roof was like smashed, was like, what happened bro? Like, he was like, no, nothing happened. I was like, no bro, come over here, go, go come to the garage. He was like, what the fuck, what happened to the car bro? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know, I'm asking you bro, you, you went out yesterday with Jeff and all the guys to the club. He was like, bro, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Jesus. And I was like, Jeff, what happened to the car? Jeff was like, man, I remember just a little bit. Like, I don't know, we were there. And, and then things unfolded and, and here we are. I was like, okay. Here we are, I don't, down a car. Yeah, I was yeah. like, hey, call your insurance, the car is total. Things <laughs> unfolded, a.k.a. car smash. Get in trouble, a.k.a. get yeah. killed. But what, yeah, I need like, a, I need like a, a Portuguese Brazilian translator book or something. What, what do these words actually the, mean? The biggest mystery, though, was the dents, the damage to the roof. <laughs> so, like, I mean, because, like, you, uh, the car didn't flip, but we're like, how is the roof dented? And so, I don't know if at, like, some point some of his stoner friends, like, try to put the surfboards on top and wrap it around and go to the beach at night or like no one has like we had no idea we're like Maybe it was just, like a, it was very random the damage to the I, car i don't know the like car was trying to escape totally. out of a window you guys jumped on the roof and there I, wasn't I, like i there wasn't was, with them so like there, uh, there was like no and i was the only one sober in the fucking whole crew yeah you know? and there was Everybody no paint was transfer or anything it yeah. was just like it was bizarre still a mystery to this day <laughs> i don't know how i get pulled into it because i was like i don't even think i was riding in that car but um. But you you went out with them. Yeah, maybe. 
they still like, don't remember. But the funny thing was, though, he just was like, he was kind of like more curious than anything. And then he was just like, like, oh, fuck, let's go to the beach. Yeah. Like, like, it was like, like, like was a, a five minutes worry. I was like, man, bro, I don't remember. I was like, maybe call the insurance. I said, fuck, it's a pretty good day. Let's go to the beach. Yeah, fuck, okay, bro. Forgot about it. I think that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's, a, lesson. that's a lesson to be learned. There'd be no way. I'd be hung up about that still. I wouldn't be your friend. You went out you told him, you were with someone who told him my car five years ago. Yeah, fuck you, man. I there was know. like 10 of us, though. Yeah, there was like, And no one had any recollection yeah. of what happened. So. Those are the new friends. You have, I have 10 friends who are so belligerent drunk, like tar is total, and no one has any idea what happened. <laughs> I, I know I wasn't the one driving because it was a stick, so I, I don't know how to yeah. drive sticks, but I mean, maybe I was. I can't tell. <laughs> maybe I was, that's why that happened. <laughs> I can't tell if this has been one long commercial for travel and tourism to Brazil or one absolutely don't ever go to Brazil commercial. <laughs> like, you're, you're going to have a good time. All right, we'll do it. It's going to be an experience. That's so after the Olympics? For, of course. Okay. Of course. You okay. want to go during the summer in yeah. Brazil, so it's like what's the November to yeah, November, February, November, roughly. Yeah. If you go like July, it's gonna be a little bit. Are you chilly in on this? Cold. Oh, I'm in. You a hundo? Yeah. Jeff, I'm you going? I'm in. I'm all always right. in. Okay, you right. My right. visa's still good. They'll this still let me back. This in. is accountability. Yeah. Right. We gotta go to Brazil now. All right. Well, Brandon, Jeff, Genta, hey, appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Always Thank you so much, guys. On Cameo, Instagram. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother.